Rather than just telling you what a database is, part of the purpose of these videos is to show you. And to do that, we need to dive right in. So, to start a new database file from scratch, first of all, launch FileMaker Pro. In the FileMaker Quick Start screen, use the area at the top that's labelled Create a New Database and click on the link provided. FileMaker then prompts you to provide a name for the new database file and to select a destination disk or folder to store the file. When you enter the file name, if you don't include the .fmp12 file name extension, it'll be added automatically when the file is saved. By the way, it's important to know that the .fmp12 file name extension is used to designate files for FileMaker 12 and 13, and may be used for future versions as well. However, versions up to 11 required a different file format which used the .fp7 file name extension instead. If you have any files from an earlier version of FileMaker, you'll find you can't open them directly into FileMaker 12 or 13. Instead, you have to convert them to the .fmp12 format so they can be opened in a current version. Thankfully, the conversion's pretty straightforward, and if you try to open earlier files into a current version, FileMaker performs the conversion for you, enabling you to create a new .fmp12 version of the file. Back to the matter at hand, once you've confirmed that the new file is being saved into a suitable location on your computer's hard drive, click on the button labelled Save at the lower right of the dialog. You're then presented with a blank window that has some buttons and controls in the status toolbar across the top, and little else except for a couple of rectangles labelled with a plus sign and a Create Field label at the top left of the main area of the window. In most other kinds of applications, when you create a new file, you'll be presented with some kind of empty space ready for you to start entering in information. For example, in a word processor, a new file generally provides a blank page for you to start typing into, and in a spreadsheet application, you're presented with an empty grid of rows and columns into which you can start entering tabular information. Because FileMaker is a database application, it requires that you create a database structure for your file before you can begin entering data. The default view FileMaker 12 presents when you first create a file is called Table View, and that's what we're seeing here. However, FileMaker 13 begins a new file in Form View and presents the Field Picker, as I describe and demonstrate in the chapter devoted to the new features of FileMaker 13. The empty Table View, as shown here, is a bit like a spreadsheet that doesn't yet have any columns or rows. However, speaking in database terms, the columns will represent fields in the database, while each row shows the data from a separate database record. So what we have here is really a database without any fields or records, rather than a spreadsheet without columns or rows. Until relatively recently, when creating a new FileMaker file, you'd have been presented with a dialog where you could begin creating fields. But FileMaker 12 and 13 let you get started by beginning to build the structure of your database without having to visit the Manage Database dialog. In fact, here in Table View, when you click on the rectangle labelled Create Field, FileMaker will add a first field to this empty database. The name of the newly created field defaults to simply Field, but you can overwrite it with a more useful and meaningful name that describes the information the field will hold. In the context of the table of data we're creating, the field name will serve as a column heading. Now, in any database, it's useful to keep track of each record you enter by giving it a unique serial number. So I'm going to make this first field a serial number field. After entering the field name, if I press the Enter key on the numeric keypad, or click the mouse in the blank area of the window, the name of the field is saved. If I later want to edit the name, I can double click on it, and then it can be edited, like so. When I move the mouse pointer over the field label in the header row, an arrow in a shaded square appears at the right of the field name. Clicking on the arrow provides access to a menu that can be used to set the data type and various other attributes of the field. For example, I should set this first field to be a number field, since it's going to store serial numbers. When I use the same menu, and select the command labelled Field Options, 
I'm able to specify an Auto Enter option to have the field generate serial numbers automatically for each record. While I'm at it, I'm also going to select the checkbox option FileMaker provides to prohibit modification of the serial numbers. This will help to ensure that the serial numbers created to identify each record won't be inadvertently changed or deleted. Next, I'll create a few additional fields to store details about publications. Let's say I add fields for title, author, publisher, and year. Unless I specify otherwise, the fields I add are created as text fields. That's fine for the title, author, and publisher fields, but the year field should really be a number field. So I'll change its type in the same way I did for the serial number field. Now I have the fields in place for a very simple database to store a single table of information about books or publications. By the way, you'll find a copy of the file I'm creating provided as the work file for this lesson, in case you'd like to open it up and take a look. With this basic set of fields in place, I can now enter some data into the database. To begin, I can click on the plus symbol at the upper left. Doing that creates a first record. Notice that as soon as I create the first record, the serial number field appears with the number 1 in it, which shows that the Auto Enter Serial Number option is working as it should. I can now tab through the remaining fields to enter some information on this first record. I'll enter Kim by Rudyard Kipling, from Airmont Publishing Company, and the year 1965. It's also easy to adjust the width of the fields to correspond to the length of the text they will hold. This is a simple matter of dragging the right-hand edge of the field in the header row to a new position. Now I'll click on the plus symbol at the left again and enter some data for a second record. Emma by Jane Austen, published by Penguin Books in 1966. Using the menu that is associated with each field heading, I can also change the sort order, for example using the option for ascending order, or a sort in descending order, or I can return the records to the original order they were entered in with the unsort command. Notice that as I sorted the data, the values in each record stayed together as the records moved to a new sort position. After these first few steps, I've managed to create the simplest of databases that I could use to help me keep track of a list of publications. For some purposes, this might be enough, but at this point, we're barely scratching the surface of what FileMaker can do for you, as you'll see in the following lessons.